Your Toyota BC Dealers presents BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. With your host, Mike Mitchell. BC Outdoor Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, Kingfisher, Yamaha, and the Pacific Salmon Foundation. Welcome everybody to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. Today we're fishing with Brian Chan. Brian, welcome to the show. It's great to see you again, Mike. Be on the water with you. Yeah, it'll be fun. So Brian, tell us where we are first of all, and then where, what we're doing. Well, we're on beautiful Peter Hope Lake. It's early spring. Yeah. Peter Hope Lake is situated about 38, 40 kilometers north of Merritt and just east of Highway 5A. About or six, 47 yeah. and a half minutes from your house. About that right, about perfect, that much. Yeah. And right. yeah, about 40 kilometers south of Kamloops. Okay, perfect. What are we fishing for today? So hopefully we're gonna find a good chronomid hatch in shallow water. Okay. And uh, we'll probably be fishing with indicators. You know, we love to do that. Yep. And uh, hopefully we'll get some nice fish. And I'm just gonna warn you right now, I've been watching a lot of game tape from last year and I've been brushing up on my terminology. My casting technique is down and I've been watching what you did last year. I noticed that whatever you said for me to use, you put something else opposite on. So I'm going opposite of what you say that today. You finally figured it out. I know, and you're gonna be getting your hands wet today. All right. All right, let's go get some fish. Sounds good, buddy. Found our little spot here, did a quick passed by the sounder and saw some fish. So what are we gonna do? Well, it's early, it's still just nine o'clock. There's yeah. some chronomids on the water, but I think they're from yesterday. Yep. So usually we try some leeches okay. first thing. And uh, I think by 10, 30, 11 o'clock, chronomids may start to come off. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we'll have a good go at them that way. Indicators? Yeah, I think we'll start with indicators or we could fish without indicators as well. But I mean, ideally, it's such a flat bottom, 10 feet yeah. deep in here. It, uh, it's pr pretty good hanging them under okay. under a strike indicator. Okay, I'm gonna find. Yeah, I put on a, um, well, you, you try a black one and I'll try a maroon one. How about you try a black one and I'll try a maroon one? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm just going to do everything you say opposite today. That's it. I'm not even going to listen. I'll right. ask you, and then whatever you tell me, I'm going to do opposite. All right, I'm hanging in. I'm going to put on a big rapple of plug right now. Fish that or anything indicator. I'm sh I'm shocked. No, I'm not. I I'm at a loss for words. Because you've finally been caught at your game here. It's taken me only four years to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah. Ooh, funny. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, beauty. That's a good fish, Brian. Way to go, Mike. We're dialed in now on Zekrana mids. Yeah, I know, you're good. I saw that go down. Yeah, and that's a good thing because I was actually paying attention this time. So, Brian, so we're, like I mentioned before, we're staying up at one of the private cabins up here. We're lucky enough just to find it on the on the net here, but other guys that want to come up and fish, maybe you know they're looking for some other options. What other options are around here? Well, certainly there's there's lots of provincial recreation sites on lakes around here. So you got a beautiful one right on Peter Hope Lake itself. Yeah. So if you got an RV camper tent, whatever, stay there. There's also provincial recreation sites on um, Plateau Lake, yeah, okay. Stump Lake, yeah. and Glimpse Lake are all nearby, as yes. well as a uh, monk. Provincial Park on uh, Nicola Lake. That's right, yeah. And uh, so lots of opportunities here. Yeah. And uh, it's a great website for anglers to search out nearby lakes with uh, with campgrounds, resorts, or uh, or, or provincial parks, and that's uh, campingrvbc.com. Okay. And it's all based on uh, a Google Earth map uh, with stock lakes and- Which is great information, but that's gonna give us all that. It gives us all that. Okay, ready, Brian, here he comes up.
Just get a fight. Lots of fight left in them. And so how long ago? We're fishing, you know, mid mid May here. There you Beautiful. Go. Well, that's not as big as I thought he was. Yeah. Sure felt like it though. These five weight rods are great. I'm just gonna clean the deck here. Okay, so Mike, I'm gonna do a quick throw pump in this fish. So pretty simple, fast, fish is in the water. Yep. Uh, 12 to 14 inches in length is about the, about the right size to do it. Anything smaller than that, it's it can do a bit. It, it, their throats aren't big enough. So we're just, this guy's perfect. Gonna keep him in the water. And then I'm gonna turn him upside down. See, it calms them down. Squeeze the water out of the pulp and out of the tube and just slide it in until you get a bit of a vacuum seal and then back it out. And the fish is ready to go. And there he is. Slide away. So now we can take a look. Put some water in our vial. So this is great. We've got a lot of chronomids in here. They're silver, black rib. And then we've got two leeches that this fish actually were still in its throat on the way down. Actually, one of the leeches is still wiggling. And so that's why fishing with leeches after a chronomid hatch, even during a chronomid, you can always catch fish on them. They always like to eat them for dessert. And uh, this is, uh, he's eating the main course and dessert at the same time. That's great. All those pupa are all wiggling. They're all alive. That is so cool. I've never seen a leech get pumped. Drop your anchor. We'll be right back with more BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Closed captioning is provided by Ace Line Hauler, the only prawn trap puller built West Coast tough. On the booby, Brian. Mike. I, I went to the dark side, sorry. Before me. Yeah, well, we got our camera boats over there right now and both of those guys just hooked up on fish too, so maybe something's going on here, right? Eh? Oh, he's, he's massive. It's massive? Yeah, we need a trough. Okay. So Hooked in the side of the mouth too, not bad. Come down and have a look at him. That hook should pop just out nicely, eh? There we go, Brian. Nice fish, mate. That's a good fish. It's a good one. That was a good tug. Almost pulled the rod out of my hand. <laughs> good thing I hold it like a chocolate bar. So we just moved over to a spot over here. We kind of went in for lunch at a awesome lunch as usual. Came back out and a couple of guys took over where we were having some success this morning. So we fished a couple spots and just popped over here. And first cast, I was talking and almost had the rod taken right out of my hand. Awesome. <laughs> so I haven't seen this guy yet. But he, oh yeah, he's got some shoulders on him. This is a crocodile. Look at this, Brian. <laughs> One more time, Mike. <laughs> we lost him. Learning with the pros. Brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. In this Learning of the Pros, folks, we're going to talk about how not to break your rods and how to take care of your rods. And we have uh, Andy Snedden here from Custom Rod Builders, Inc. Andy, welcome. Hi, Mike. Let's, Good to be here. Let's talk a little bit about your expertise here. Well, we build fishing rods. We also repair fishing rods, so we get to see a lot of broken ones. I bet, yeah. Um, and there's a whole number of ways that people break rods. Ceiling fans take their toll, car mm -hmm. doors, sliding off the side of the car while you're stringing it up. Yeah. or stringing it up and pulling down on the line yeah. uh, straight down on the tip generally breaks a rod. Yeah, 
And so really what we want to do is we want to protect our, our investment because a lot of these rods we Expensive can get. Expensive gear. You know, you know, and, and not everybody has a great manufacturer's warranty. So if you're constantly breaking stuff, it's going to come right out of your bank account. Absolutely. So. so what you should remember is while graphite is extremely strong, we make these blanks thin-walled so that they're light and efficient, but that means that they're relatively fragile. So any impact can damage the graphite and sooner or later it's going to fail. If you keep your ferrules tight, that's important. Check your ferrules throughout the day to make sure they're nice and snug. Mm -hmm. Always fight a fish from the power of the rod, which is in the butt, mm -hmm. not in the tip. Yeah. If you keep the, the power in the butt, the tip will never break. That's Remember cool. that Fish don't break rods, fishermen break rods. That's right, well, that's a good tip. So again, folks, uh, for more tips like this, visit bcoutdoorsmagazine.com. Another guy, Whoa, oh, big jump right in front of the camera nice boat. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> That's a good fish. Anytime you catch a fish, anytime a fish can jump like that, that's awesome. Not the hugest fish by any means, but it's been a great day of fishing on Peter Hope Lake, Brian. Hey? Well, considering, you know, the main lake, we couldn't spend a lot of time on it today because it's just too, yeah, too windy. Yeah, and the wind's picked up a little bit in here too. And, and so you, your choices are limited. We're lucky we got the little lake here. Yeah. Yeah. He's a scrapper. Yeah. Okay, Brian, you ready? This guy's coming in. Not yet. Ready, Mike? No, he's not. I'm ready. He's not ready yet. Hmm? He's a scrapper. He's not no, ready. Yeah. No, not really. cooperating. Yeah. Awesome. I'll come down and do a release on him, Brian. Are you going to pass him up here? The viewers have a quick look. Nine times out of the ten, I'll oh, pop out. Is already out. Oh, it's right in his beak. That's a good hook, Sutton. Okay, hook's out. That's good. His teeth are caught in the net. There he goes. Well, oh, a little bit of a rough release. I slipped out of my hand. There he's gone. Awesome. What do you got there, Brian? Well, I got one that you normally catch. Come on. Yeah. That's, no, I got a little one on. That's straight from the nursery. Yeah. Well, I don't need that guy. And you were just reeling in because you were going to do... No, I was just doing a fast, I was just a fast strip retrieve. You oh, got to okay. pay attention. All right, all right. There we go. Job. Brian, I'll, I'll release this guy for you. Yeah, thanks, mate. Okay. Here we go. Oh, there he goes away. Do you guide or have a lodge that would like to host BC Outdoor Sport Fishing? Drop us a line at info at mountainviewproductions.ca. There's more BC Outdoor Sport Fishing right after this break. Let's get back on the water with BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. So really, two things, really weird. It's been a bit of a lull here. Yeah. And what I, what I did in these last two fish I've hooked, I just missed one again. I'm actually stripping in a little bit more. I'm giving yeah. imparting more action yep. on that chronomid. So they see it. And they more of it. an attractant, right? Yeah. And more of an instinctual bite for them too. Yep. I've never fished this lake. I don't know this body of water at all. What, what do you suggest to people to do? I mean, what do they start with? What do they fish with? Like, what, well, where, like where to go, right? Yeah, like today when we came into the lake, we cruised around for a fair while yep. looking, and I'm, I'm looking for moving fish. And we stopped here because I saw two or three fish roll. Yeah. And we anchored just above them. That's why I had you positioning the boat, playing with the boat yep. angle. And then we could, then from there, we got to figure out what to try to use. Yeah. 
we know the chronomids are coming off because we see the swallows, the birds are an indication. We see the husks on the, yep. on the, on the surface, the and we've actually seen them, the shocks, sorry. Yep. And we've actually also seen uh, some, some coming up and, and, and hatching right on the surface here too, right? Yeah. So that's a good indicator, but how do you know if it's a 12 or 14 or really, aside from getting a searching pattern out, getting a, a decent fish, to pump, right? Well, you can see the shucks on the water. So yeah. You can get an idea that way. But always, you know, when we're fishing in the spring this time of year, you know, a really good go-to color is always to try a black and red one first. Yep. And even before you even put a chronomid on, it's always worth uh, putting a leech on. Yeah. They're, they're always something um, that are in the water column and they always work well in the spring. Yeah. And as we've seen today, we did that, that uh, throat pump on that guy and two Two, le leeches. two leeches came One out. huge leech, yeah. yeah. One of them still Very alive. interesting, yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. interesting, which yeah. I had never seen. I've seen yeah. lots of chronomids and, and different, uh, different bugs. Yeah, there's no, no substitution for being observant. You gotta be looking on the water. We're just looking on the water now and there's yeah. five or six shucks on the water. Yeah. What do you got here, Mike? It's I got a good, good little fish, fish here. He's got a good fight. A little bite on him. Yep, I'll get him up. There he is. Oh, oh. Hold on come back. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Here. Ready, Brian? Yep. We got him. There you go, Mike. Thank you. This one's not okay. Sorry, slipped oh, out. Okay. Gone. And now, here are all the secrets of our tackle and gear. Hello folks, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the gear that we've been using on today's episode. Uh, we started out with the brand new MHX fly rods. Uh, these are built by custom rod builders out of Victoria. Um, this one we started out with is a 9 foot 6 weight. We're throwing our boobies with those. And then we switched over to our uh, 10 foot 5 weights as well for chronomid fishing. Again, paired them both up with Islander LX 3.2 reels. Okay, the sinking line on that is a type 6 Cortland. This on here is a Cortland Precision five weight line. Leaders are Climax leaders, nine foot Climax leaders to a barrel swivel. And then we tipped it off with our Suffix fluorocarbon leader. Okay, well, we'll talk a little bit about the flies and the strike indicators here next, folks. Uh, we started out today, we were using uh, the number 12 or 14, black with gray or black with silver wire with the little ice cream cone uh, bead head on it there. And then we went later in the afternoon, we switched up and we were fishing the boobies here as well. And this is the sunrise booby. Um, of course, strike indicators are important, the quick release strike indicators from Phil Rowley. And then we also fished out of our G3 boat uh, with the 60 horse Yamaha on it. Got us everywhere we needed to be today and uh, very comfortable to fish out of. We're gonna follow up here with a quick list of our products for you to review. All Tackle and Gear is available at Steveston Marine and Hardware. How does that feel, Brian? It's uh, not bad. That's not bad. Oh, oh, beauty jump. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to show off a little bit. Do you need the net? Ah, uh, yeah, we probably should. I'm just going to tuck down here. Uh, it's bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, it's a good fish. One of the things we've been talking about lately is, in, especially in my editorials and stuff, is getting your neighbors out fishing. Right. And you know, getting kids involved and friends involved and getting more people out because this is it's a great activity. You incorporate this into a weekend of fishing yep. or a weekend of camping. <laughs> It's, it's spectacular, right? It's just, yeah. and we're so blessed with what we have. Yeah. But what are some of the initiatives that the Freshwater Fishery Societies are doing right now to help with that, to try to get people going up? Well, certainly this year, Mike, uh, there's a big, another big push by the society to uh, conduct learn to fish programs throughout the province and certainly in uh, more urban areas, lower mainland, greater Vancouver, southern Vancouver Island. And we're also uh, developing a fishing pond in... Uh, on the PE grounds in Vancouver in Hastings Park. Oh, neat. So There's that's a fish exciting. on. Hold on. You're down. Take this, You're take down. this, take this. <laughs> there we go. As we're netting Brian's, I put my rod down and kept mine in. We got a double header basically, Brian. Yeah. I'm going to let this fish go, Mike. Okay.
There's a nice rainbow, nice little Peter Hope Lake rainbow. Is that a good fish, Brian? Yeah, just chunky fish. They're all good fish, aren't they? They're all good. So the other... It works, yeah, sorry, we cut you off here with a double, yeah. the double header here of <laughs> fish. I don't want my rod to go in here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a pot, there, there's there's a natural lake on the Peony grounds yeah, at Hastings Park, yeah, times, yeah. and the, the society's worked with the City of Vancouver, and uh, we're going to be stocking it, putting a wharf on it, and running learn to fish programs right and oh great right on the Peony grounds. That's exciting. Great. And we're also there, we've also got lots of new tips, and fishing advice on uh, on our website GoFishBC.com. Okay. Yeah, we'll check that out. Oh, that's a good little fish. Yeah, it's got some shoulders on them. Awesome. Oh, man, oh, nice. Mike. That's about average for what we've been getting today. Yeah. Nothing. Oh, you've lost. That one at the boat lost here. Lost the big one down. Yeah. That wasn't so it's much angler error, but more about netman era here. Net boy missed out on him. You going to pop that for me? Yep. Thanks. Okay, so here's that nice little fish. Mike. It's good fish, yeah. That's about average, very average yeah. what we've been getting out of here today. And again, there's definitely bigger ones in here. That that type of this type of fishery is just a, is a great fishery to take part in. Obviously, but not not big by num by oh. sheer size, but numbers of fish are good. Yeah, there's good numbers in here, and yeah. there are some big ones in the little lake sure, as well. Sure, sure. And certainly monsters in the big lake. Yeah, and uh, maybe next time we'll try out to get after the with the wind. Mother Nature yeah. dictates where we're going to fish, right? Exactly. Yeah. And today yeah. it was no wind in here and yeah. lots of boats, but we. We did well. Yeah, I can't we did complain. really well. But uh, like everything, we can run out of time. I gotta head home and we're done for the day. Yep. Well, we'll get out again, Mike. Oh, thanks you for coming that. out. It's, been, it's good. It's been Your fun as usual. I know, if they're wet, they're wet all day. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway. And uh, thank you folks for joining us on BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. We look forward to having you join us on a future episode. Also stay tuned during the credits here. We're gonna answer some questions that were posted on Facebook and Twitter. Your Toyota BC dealers proudly present BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Made possible by Rapala. Crafted from experience. Yamaha. What kind of Yamaha are you? Kingfisher. Fish the good times. The Pacific Salmon Foundation. Bringing them back stream by stream. Port Boathouse. Our official servicing dealership. Along with... First question on our Facebook page, Brian, is from David Rickson. This question is, at what water temperature do chronomids start to rise? So so what he's asking is uh, when do they start hatching? Mm -hmm. And so the, the key uh, temperature for early spring hatches, once the surface temperatures reach about 48 degrees Fahrenheit mm -hmm. or about 9 degrees centigrade, that's when the first hatches will start. And that means hatches that are big enough you can imitate. Okay. Cooler than that, you'll see tiny, tiny what we call reed smuts that are like size 28 to 32. Yeah, we don't want to fish those. And we don't, we can't imitate them. No. So, 48 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface, it's gonna rock. Good stuff.